بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين العاقبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا على ظالمين اللهم صل على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ومن تمسك بسنته إلى يوم الدين ثم أما بعد الحمد لله على نعمة الإسلام والسنة All praise and thanks belong to Allah for guiding us to Islam and for guiding us to the Sunnah Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He has guided us to a perfect deen. Our way of life, our deen is perfect. Just as Allah ta'ala, He informed us of that. When Allah ta'ala, He said, الْيَوْمَ أَكْمَدْتُ لَكُمْ دِينَكُمْ وَأَتْمَمْتُ عَلَيْكُمْ نِعْمَتِي وَرَضِيْتُ لَكُمُ الْإِسْلَامَ دِينًا Allah ta'ala, He says what means, and on this day, I have perfected for you your religion. Your way of life, your deen, it's perfect. And I've completed my favor upon you. And I'm pleased for you, Islam, as your way of life. Alhamdulillah, we have guidance. But only the one who follows the guidance is the one who will benefit. So it is incumbent upon us that we cling tenaciously to the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam. That we are upon that which the Prophet wasallam he was upon. And that we are upon that which the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum, that what they were upon. Because this is the way of success and this is the path that leads to the Jannah. An Anas bin Malik radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And then Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And I want you to pay very close attention because. What we want to speak about is something that each and every one of us is in need of. Each and every one of us who finds ourselves here in the masjid today, we are in need of it. Each and every one of us who my voice may reach them, you will find that they are in need of it. Because this is something that each and every one of us we do. We do repeatedly, constantly, daily, Sometimes, multiple times a day, and for some people, a few times a week. But ala kulli hal, we all do it. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he gave us guidance in every aspect of our lives, and it is incumbent that we follow the guidance that is found in the Sunnah. Allah subhanahu wa taala he revealed to us in the Quran guidance for every aspect of our lives. It is incumbent that we follow the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, وَمَا أَتَاكُمُ الرَّسُولُ فَخُذُوا وَمَا نَهَاكُمْ عَنْهُ فَانْتَهُوا And whatever the messenger gives you, take it. And whatever he prohibits you from, then stay away from it. Are we upon guidance when it comes to leaving our houses? It comes in this hadith and Anas, رضي الله تعالى عنه. And then Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, إذا قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم إذا خرج الرجل من بيته that when a man leaves out from his house or a woman when she leaves from out of her house فقال and they say بسم الله توكلت على الله لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله that when they come out of their homes when they step foot out of their house each and every one of us, we are to say, Bismillah, tawakkaltu ala Allah, la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. What translated means, roughly, and I say a rough translation because as we will see, it means more than just the words that are translated. More is understood, more is implied. It encompasses more. That when one says, Bismillah, in the name of Allah, I put my trust upon Allah, there is no power and no might except with Allah. When one steps out of his door and he says that, and I want you to pay very close attention, because we are constantly under attack, whether we realize it or whether we do not realize it. We are constantly under assault, whether we know it or we don't know it. That when a person comes out of his house, and he says, or she says, Bismillah, 
توكلت على الله لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله قال قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يقال حين إذن at that point it is said at that point it is said هديت وكفيت وبقيت at that point it is said you have been guided you have been sufficed you have been protected فيتناحى عنه الشيطان and then the shaytan runs away from him the shayateen they get far away from him they get away from him فيقول فيقول الشيطان and then a shaytan then a shaytan فيقول شيطان then a shaytan he says كيف لك برجل قد هدي وَكُفِيَ وَبُقِيَ Then one shaytan says to another shaytan, What avenue do you have to wreak havoc and to make trouble? This is what's understood. What avenue do you have for a man or woman who has been guided, that have been sufficed, and they have been protected. One of the things I want you to take away is that as soon as you walk out of your house, the shayateen, the devils, the shayateen from the jinn, they're watching, they're waiting. They're waiting for you to step out of your house. They're waiting for you to leave your residence. They're watching you to see if you're going to remember Allah or not. Because if you step out of your house and you say, Bismillah, tawakkaltu ala Allah, la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah, then the shayateen, when they see that, they know, we can't do anything to this guy. He has been guided, he has been sufficed, he has been protected. So what is understood? That if we come out of our homes and we do not remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if we step foot out of our homes and we do not make this dua, then what? Then we don't have this protection. And then the shayateen can wreak havoc upon us throughout our day. So if you're having a bad day from the bad days, did you say the dua when you step foot out of your home? If things don't seem to be going good for you, if people are interacting with you in a way in which is not befitting, if you're being disrespected, so on and so forth, raji' nafsak. Check yourself. Reevaluate. Go back and think about your morning. Did you make the dua when you step foot out of your home? Did you remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you step foot out of your home? And do you know this dua? And did you know that this dua existed? Because we get preoccupied by the evils of our souls. And by the shaytan, the shaytan preoccupies us. He preoccupies us so that we do not benefit ourselves. He preoccupies us from those things which are beneficial for us. So instead of learning and memorizing the likes of these supplications, we spend our evening scrolling through TikTok, looking at the videos. We play around on Facebook looking at this and looking at the posts. We play around on Twitter looking at who said what and what's going on. Or he will trick us into doing things that are mubah, doing things that ordinarily they are okay, like watching the news, reading news articles, so on and so forth for the medical professionals, reading through the medical journals, so on and so forth, 
things that may have to it a benefit, but could be done to the detriment of that which is more beneficial. So instead of spending hours upon hours upon hours reading through medical journals and the latest te technology and the periodicals and so on and so forth, take some time out of every single day to study your religion. Take some time out of every single day to study your religion. Take some time out of every single day to learn those supplications that you need to be successful. Make it a goal of yours that you are going to learn as many supplications from the authentic sunnah as possible and you are going to utilize them at the times in which they should be utilized. Make this a mission of yours. Make this a priority of yours. Because it is in the remembrance of Allah that you will find tranquility for your hearts. You will find success. And you will find a protection from the shaytan. هذا أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولجميع المسلمين فاستغفروا فإنه هو الغفور الرحيم. بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وبعد يا عباد الله. The statement of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم إذا خرج الرجل من بيته that when a man leaves out of his home أي حال خروجه من بيته meaning when he is leaving out of his home so during the process of leaving out of your home make sure you make this dua or it could be from your place of residence let's say for example you're traveling you're traveling somewhere you're in a hotel room you're on an Airbnb whatever the case is wherever you are staying at staying at a friend's house staying at a relative's house Wherever you are staying at, even if it's not your home, it's where you're staying. So when you walk out the door, when your feet cross over that threshold of that place that you're staying in, make the dua. Make the dua. This will be the appropriate time to make the dua. And by saying, Bismillah, because we say what? Bismillah, tawakkaltu ala Allah. By saying, Bismillah, this is al isti'ana. This is seeking aid, help, and assistance. Seeking aid, help, and assistance, and, and assistance. A eh? what you're saying is, أَخْرُجُ طَالِبًا مِنْ اللَّهِ الْعَوْنُ وَالْحِفْ وَالْتَسْدِيدِ. It means that what you're really saying is, I am leaving out. I'm exiting the residence, seeking from Allah to aid me, to help me, to protect me, and to keep me guided, to give me success. This is, what me, this is what it means when you walk out of your house and you say, Bismillah. You see, that's why I said the translation is just an aspect. It's a surface meaning of the real meaning. And this is an encouragement for myself. And I hope for you all and whoever hears my voice to learn Arabic. Because just by the translation, you would not have gotten all of that. But we have to learn Arabic and we have to study and to seek ilm, seek knowledge. Ana kulli hal. Tawakkaltu ala Allah. I put my trust upon Allah. Ay, i'tamadtu alayhi. I put full dependency upon Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wal qaw, la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. And the statement of la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. Hiya kalima. Islam. Istislam wa tafweed. This is a kalima of true submission. True submission unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Submitting unto Allah. True submission unto Allah. And turning over all of your affairs to Allah. Because you know, there is no tawfiq. There is no success. Except that it comes from Allah. If Allah doesn't give you success, you will never be successful. If Allah ta'ala does not decree it for you, it will never happen for you. If Allah Ta'ala does not decree it for you, it would never happen for you. You would never reach it. You will never touch it. You will never get it. MashaAllah can. Whatever Allah wills is, whatever He does not will, it is not. So, with that, an individual 
he would always be connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He will not be connected to the means. Do you understand? The means, we have to take the means. For example, if you want a job, you have to fill out applications, you have to you know, put forth inquiries, so on and so forth. You have to build your resume, upload it to whatever site, app, whatever the case is. These are from the means. But the mu'min is never dependent upon the means because they know this is just the footwork. But whether I get the job or not, it's not dependent upon this, but it is dependent upon Allah granting me that job. Do you understand? So even with that, we never connect ourselves to anything except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when you're going out to go shopping for groceries or whatever the case is, you realize whatever I'm about to do, la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. If I'm going to be successful today, it's going to be a good day for me, it's only because Allah gave it to me. So a person never becomes dependent upon themselves, never becomes yani, deluded into believing that they can do anything because they know it is all from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is a dars, this is a lesson. Every time a person comes out of his house, they remind themselves of this. And the reward of that is that then they are protected from the shayateen. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because this is one of the supplications that we should make when we leave our homes. After saying this, an individual, <clears throat> they should also say, as it comes in the hadith from our mother, Um Salima, radiallahu ta'ala anha, she said that, ma kharaja nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam min bayti. She said, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he didn't leave out of my house. How, how, how often? Sometimes, ahyanan, sometimes, or all the time. Our mother, radiallahu ta'ala anha, she said, Qatta. He never, he never left out of my house. Illa rafa'a tarafahu ila sama, except that he looked up to the sky. Because Allah ta'ala, he has ulu. He is above. He is the most high. Ar-Rahman ala al-Arsh al-Sawa. The most beneficent is above his throne. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he will look up, he will gaze up, and he will say, فَقَالْ Allahumma inni a'udhu bika an adilla aw udil That, O oh Allah, I seek refuge in you, that I should go astray out, udal, or that I should be led astray. So I want you to pay very close attention because when we go outside our house, you can just be going to buy some apples and some oranges. It's dangerous outside your house. It's dangerous. A lot of things can happen outside your house. When you step foot outside your house, a lot of things can happen to you. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he would Every time he would leave, he would gaze up and he would say, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika an adilla aw udal. I seek refuge in you that I should go astray or I should be led astray. This is Nabi. This is the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam seeking refuge in Allah from going astray or being led astray. So do any one of us feel secured into believing that it is impossible for us to go astray? Oh, I'm just going to get some apples and oranges. I'll be okay, right? Maybe, maybe, maybe not. You don't know what you're going to run into in the grocery store. You don't know what you're going to run into outside the grocery store. You don't know what you're going to run into passing the alley on your way to the grocery store. You don't know what is going to, what could possibly happen. You don't know. You don't know. Ala kulli hal. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he will go on to say, Aw azilla, aw uzalla. And I seek refuge in you, O Allah, that I don't slip or be made to slip. That I don't slip or be made to slip. The ulama, they explain that this particular phrase, it has very it, many, many meanings, right? Meaning that I don't slip or be made to slip. It could be literally that I don't slip or somebody forced me into slipping. But they said it could also mean, as it is mentioned, 
that a man's foot will slip. This phrase, as it comes in the, the Arabic language about the slipping of a man's foot. Zellat qadamu fulan. You could say that a person, yani, zellat, his foot zellat. And what it means here is that waqa'a min uluwin in a hubutu. It means that he fell from grace. He fell from a high place down. What we say in English, he fell from grace. So the Prophet ﷺ, he used to seek refuge in Allah. That I will slip or be made to slip. That's serious. The Prophet ﷺ, he will say, أو أظلم أو أظلم Or, I seek refuge in you, O Allah, that I should oppress someone. Zul is to put something in other than its proper place, to misappropriate something, to put a word in the instance where you should have been silent, to put silence in a situation where you should have brought words. The Prophet ﷺ, he would make dua, seek refuge in Allah, that he will not misappropriate anything, that he will not commit oppression nor be oppressed. أو أجهل أو يجهل عليا and he will seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he acted in an ignorant manner or that he was treated ignorantly or dealt with in an ignorant manner that people acted ignorant to him by speaking to him ignorantly treating him in, a, in, a, in an ignorant manner so on and so forth but جهل ضد العيل and ignorance is the opposite of knowledge so when one will reflect on that which the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he will seek refuge in Allah from every time he walked out of the house of our mother Um Salima anha, then you will understand the streets is dangerous. It's dangerous out there. I don't care if you live in a nice cookie cutter neighborhood. It's still dangerous. I don't care if you live in Beverly Hills. Well, it's probably more dangerous there. But all this, the corruption and the people upon corruption and low morals and low values and so on and so forth. I don't care if you live in a neighborhood that has a very low crime rate. It's dangerous. It's dangerous. That evil neighbor that may invite you to something haram is dangerous. It's possible when you step out of your doors. So we have to fortify ourselves by running and fleeing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and begging him to protect us. Never feel that you are secure enough that you don't need Allah because you always need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You always need Allah. You will always need Allah. We will always need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So learn the supplications and when they should be said and use them, utilize them if you are truly of those who are concerned about being successful. Spend your time doing this and do not look down upon these things. Don't underestimate them nor deem them as things that children learn. But you yourself are beyond that. No, no, no. No, you're not. You never will be. We have to beg Allah and constantly remember Allah by supplicating to him with that which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught us as ta'ala an yuwafiqni wa iyaakum bima yuhibbuhu wa yarda wa an yaj'alni wa iyaakum min al-ladhina yastami'una al-qawlan wa yattabi'una ahsana wa an yaj'alna min man idha u'tiya shakar wa dhubutuliya sabar wa idha adhaba staghfar fa inna haa'ulai thalath anwanu sa'ada rabbana atina fi dunya hasana وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار هذا يا عباد فأقيموا الصلاة